Tonight, from the war zone, the fall of Baghdad. Saddam's regime in the Iraqi capital is toppled. Iraqi civilians take to the streets to celebrate their day of liberation. But losses mount on both sides, and a frantic search is underway for Iraq's most dangerous weapon. Frontline coverage tonight of a dictator's final days. This is the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Tonight, continuing coverage of America at War. The Fall of Baghdad. From the war zone, here is Dan Rather. Good evening from the war zone. Baghdad has fallen. Three weeks after the United States launched an attack on Iraq to oust Saddam Hussein, the U.S. military declared that his collapsing government no longer controls the capital. Without fanfare, with scarcely a shot fired, American armor rolled into the center of Baghdad today and began liberating the city as Iraqis celebrated in the streets. CBS News has a team of correspondents in key locations around the capital. We began with Lara Logan and the removal of a dictator from his seat of power. This is the moment U.S. Marines literally toppled Saddam Hussein, and history was made. The Iraqi crowd understood perhaps more than anyone what this meant. As this giant symbol of Saddam's regime was torn from its pedestal, they pelted it with shattered concrete. When it crashed to the floor, they rushed forward frenzied to stamp triumphantly on the broken metal body of the man they'd feared for so long. No one knew if he was alive or dead, but the presence of American Marines was all the reassurance they needed. A floodgate of emotion suppressed for too long finally unleashed. For the Marines, it was the moment the sacrifices they'd made suddenly had real meaning. Uh, it's been friendly, they've been waving, giving us thumbs up, uh, all the ones that we've met. They've been coming up, shaking our hands, giving us flowers, cigarettes for those who smoke, those that don't, they just hand it to them anyways. <laughs> Minutes before, American tanks rolled down the main road towards Waha Square, a site so many Iraqis told me before the war began they never believed they would ever see in Baghdad. These terrified women and children cowered in fear as U.S. Marines entered a nearby hotel to make it secure. They were never under threat, but as families of Ba'ath Party members, they had no idea what to expect from the men who'd come to remove that party from power. Not everyone here will welcome the Marines, and they know their job is not yet done. As this skirmish with Iraqi resistance fighters still in the area shows. They may not be as well armed, but their weapons are no less deadly. While the capital is not yet secure, and Iraqis may not want foreigners in their country for long, on this day, Baghdad was a city with hope that the future will be better than the past. Lara Logan, CBS News, Baghdad. While the center of Baghdad seems securely in the hands of U.S. Marines, other sections of the capital city are anything but secure, as CBS's Byron Pitts found out today, firsthand and the hard way. This morning, the U.S. Marines rolled into downtown Baghdad, locked and loaded for a fight, when a party broke out. Iraqi citizens chanting and screaming as they tore down this life-size statue of Saddam Hussein on the steps of the Iraqi oil ministry. All of the Marines were clearing this 13-story building. It was one of the last remaining symbols of Saddam's regime. Saddam, dead. No Saddam. Okay. Oh, I think I feel about as proud as they did. I mean, I'd, too bad it wasn't him personally, but we'll take a statue. But suddenly the celebration stopped with the crack of the gunfire. But the party did not last long. About 45 minutes after those Iraqi civilians tore down that statue of Saddam Hussein, these Marines found themselves in the middle of a firefight. They've spotted at least three men firing on their position 
here at the Iraqi Ministry of Oil. Hey, the fire is coming from the White Warehouse! This wasn't warfare. This was a street fight. U.S. Marines, average age 19 to 22, each with an M16, versus Saddam's Fedayeen paramilitary, also young men with AK-47s. Nearly two hours of gunfire and rocket-propelled grenade launchers. These Marines from Lima Company, based in 29 Palms, California, are flanked on three sides by snipers when a corporal spots three heads bobbing behind a wall. He pleads with Lima Company's commanding officer to take the shot. But Captain George Schreffler from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, orders his man to stand down, wait until he can see a weapon. But we need some positive ID before we engage it. The captain made the right call. Those three heads were an Iraqi family, a husband, his wife, and daughter. In the end, two Iraqi snipers dead, a third escaped, no American casualties. And a platoon of young Marines learned a valuable lesson. America is winning this war. But she cannot end it, at least not yet. Byron Pitts, CBS News, Baghdad. Looking beyond Baghdad today, U.S. military planners know they have a lot more work to do to erase and replace the regime of Saddam in Iraq. We take you now to the Pentagon for an overview. CBS's David Martin has the big picture. The whereabouts of Saddam Hussein remains unknown tonight. And finding him and the rest of his inner circle is only one of many tasks that need to be accomplished before the U.S. can claim victory. Find the POWs. Seven Americans known to be in Iraqi hands and 11 more listed as missing in action. Marines who took over the military airfield on the outskirts of Baghdad found blood-stained uniforms belonging to members of the ambush supply convoy Jessica Lynch was part of. And today, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs issued a warning to the Iraqi captors. When the hostilities end, we fully expect to find these young men and women in good health and well cared for. Liberate northern Iraq. American forces have not yet taken either the oil fields, which are believed to be rigged for demolition, or the major cities of the north, including Saddam's hometown of Tikrit. There are still tens of thousands of Iraqi troops in the north, some of them the same kind of Fedayeen fighters who fought so fiercely in the south. The U.S. is flying in tanks and armored personnel carriers to give the paratroopers who jumped in at the start of the war the firepower needed to seize the cities. Heavy bombing has already helped a small number of special forces and an army of Kurdish foot soldiers seize key terrain from the Iraqis. U.S. special forces have seized a small town north of uh, Mosul and key positions south of Erbil destroying tanks and trucks and taking several hundred enemy prisoners of war. Find weapons of mass destruction. Evidence Saddam was developing chemical, biological, and even nuclear weapons has been the primary justification for sacrificing more than 100 American lives to get rid of him. U.S. forces have come across a number of suspicious sites, but there are still no confirmed discoveries of chemical or biological weapons. Tonight in Baghdad, the CIA is searching for key scientists who could tell the U.S. exactly where those weapons of mass destruction are hidden. Dan? David Martin. As Saddam's government vanished today, so did any semblance of government control. The result in Baghdad, as earlier in Basra, was widespread looting. CBS News correspondent John Roberts is on the scene with that part of the story. For the Marines who are fighting for control of Baghdad's eastern neighborhoods, this war is not over yet. As soon as we crossed the Tigris, we had to clear some trench lines. We had uh, at least 30 Iraqi troops on the bush line. And uh, we engaged, took out bunkers with grenades, took out the trench line with uh, machine guns. The celebrating in the city center aside, the Marines still have much work to do, clearing residential areas of Saddam's militia and foreigners who have come to Iraq to kill Americans. We're meeting sporadic resistance. Uh, uh, you see uh, fairly um, determined stuff at first. You know, for the first couple minutes, it's just fast and furious. But then what happens is as soon as they realize got, the Marines are here to kill them, these guys are breaking and running. With each passing hour, these Marines are drawing closer to their objective. No one wants to put an exact timeline on it, but they say you can almost feel the regime crumbling. I think from what I've seen, you know, at, at my level, we're witnessing the final death throes of this regime. But in the Marine sector, they are also witnessing the death throes of law and order. 
With the military broken and the police afraid to come out, Iraqis are looting on a grand scale. They steal trucks, generators, combine harvesters. What can't be carried is rolled, pushed, even dragged back home. And every thief, it seems, is proud of his crime, happy to take back what they believe was taken from them. As comical as it all might seem, it is a clear sign that while war might be ending, there is trouble ahead. John Roberts, CBS News, with the Marines in Baghdad. Snapping Saddam's power grip on Baghdad came at a price, including new casualties with the U.S. Army's 3rd Infantry Division among those who had helped storm and secure the Baghdad airport. CBS News correspondent Jim Axelrod, who's been traveling with the 3rd ID, has their stories. It's a down day for the soldiers of Bravo Company, a chance to do some wash, soak their feet, get a haircut. They could use a down day, for they are having one hell of a week. Things just started going crazy. There were shots coming from every angle. When 20 soldiers from Bravo Company got pinned down last Friday, the platoon sergeant, Paul Smith, grabbed the 50 caliber machine gun on an armored personnel carrier like this one and started firing. Inside the personnel carrier, Private Michael Seaman was feeding Sergeant Smith ammo. What was he saying? He just kept saying, give me more ammo, give me more ammo. Need to get these guys out of here. Everyone got out alive. Everyone but Sergeant Smith. And replacing him meant stepping into some big shoes. The job fell to a young sergeant in his mid-20s, Lincoln Holland said, whose challenge was helping young troops soldier on through their grief. He was young, he had a lot of energy. First Sergeant Tim Campbell was the man who picked Holland's aid to replace Smith. And he led by example. That's why he was uh, where he was when he got shot. Three days later, out in front of his men, the new platoon sergeant was shot and killed in battle. When you heard he was hit, what did you think? Not again. That's the second, second leader in a matter of days. As much as joy is flourishing in Baghdad, not every U.S. soldier is feeling it. We've said prayer after prayer. I mean, that kind of stuff does happen in war, but it's like it's not supposed to happen to us. Jim Axelrod, CBS News, Baghdad. There certainly is a sense of shock and awe, along with death, pain, and fear in Baghdad tonight, and that figures to go on for a number of days. We intend to broadcast from Baghdad tomorrow night. Until then, Dan Rather for the CBS Evening News reporting tonight from Amman, Jordan. Now to Harry Smith in New York. Harry? All right, Dan. The scenes from Baghdad brought special joy today to many people of Iraqi descent living in the big Arab-American community in Dearborn, Michigan. Hundreds turned out to celebrate what one called a new Iraq without Saddam, without his statues, and without his torture chambers. Still ahead on the CBS Evening News, President Bush's reaction. He has Vice President Cheney do the talking, and it's strong talk for America's enemies. I don't have the greatest soil here, and the topsoil you buy isn't much better. But this is miracle Grow Garden Soil. Premium organic materials plus miracle Grow plant food mixed in. Look at the difference it makes. Amazing. Chilly nights at the firehouse mean heartburn and gas. These don't relieve both, but new Gas X with Maalox does. And new soft gels that combine the heartburn relief of Maalox with the power of Gas X. New Gas X with Maalox soft gels beats the burn and the bloat fast. Mr. Goodwrench, who is this one and only GM expert? L let me get this straight. He does brake work. Yep. Diagnostics. Yep. Wheel alignments. Yep. Root canal. Yep. Gotcha. And he replaced your tires. Sure did. Oh, that's good melon. What, does he wear a cape? A cape. Why would he wear a cape? Find Mr. Goodwrench at over 7,000 GM dealerships nationwide. You know, I could use a partner on this. Are you in? As long as I'm home by 7. Great. The Equal Bowl. It's right next to the Sugar Bowl in my restaurant and in my home. I use Equal in my coffee. It's delicious and there's no aftertaste. You want to make a great pie? New Equal Spoonful makes it easy. It measures cup for cup, just like sugar. Apple, my first love. Mmm. Tastes great. And without all that extra sugar. 
I love it. Zero calorie equal. Have you tried it lately? Oh no, here it comes. Big time neck pain. Oh. Yeah, the kind that makes you want to throw in the towel. What, are you going to feel sorry for yourself? Oh. Or grab a Thermacare, that new air-activated heat wrap. Open it up, it gets warm. It stays warm for eight hours. Oh. Deeply relaxing tight muscles. So, circulation flows in, helping pain flow out. Ooh. Can you uh, dig it? Thermacare heat wraps. Wrap yourself in relief. <laughs> Why would you want another credit card? Well, what if it supported your school? Reflected your interests? Gave you something back? Bank One gives you over 1,200 different cards to choose from. So you can choose the one that's right for you. Still carrying around someone else's credit card? Maybe it's time you got one of your own. On this day Baghdad fell, President Bush mostly stayed out of view and said nothing publicly about the events in Iraq. CBS News correspondent Bill Plant reports, by contrast, Vice President Cheney had plenty to say. The president watched efforts to pull down Saddam's statue, returning later to the TV to see it in pieces. His only comment, they got it down. There was no public celebrating at the White House, but the vice president, speaking in New Orleans, couldn't resist a pre-victory laugh. At the conclusion of the war, we'll mark one of the most extraordinary military campaigns ever conducted. It's proceeded according to a carefully drawn plan with fixed objectives and flexibility and meaning. Cheney has been a strong advocate of the war against Iraq and worked closely with General Tommy Franks to draw up the war plan. He took a swipe at critics who thought the administration hadn't put enough forces on the ground. The plan was criticized by some retired military officers embedded in TV studios. <laughs> the vice president has argued that the U.S. has a moral obligation to confront terrorists as well as states which possess weapons of mass destruction. He said the campaign in Iraq sends a clear message. The United States and our coalition partners are showing that we have the capacity and the will to wage war on terror and to win decisively. That blunt warning took on more weight later in the day when Defense Secretary Rumsfeld accused Syria of helping to move Saddam loyalists out of Iraq and repeated the charge that Syria sent military equipment, including night vision goggles, into Iraq. Harry? Bill Plan at the White House. Thanks. On the CBS Market Watch, Wall Street's optimism about the war is giving way to pessimism about corporate profits. Stocks closed lower today. The Dow lost just over 100 points. The Nasdaq, 26. Coming up next on the CBS Evening News, the focus of the war begins shifting now to northern Iraq, where they're celebrating but still fighting. when you get gas, pressure, and bloating. Don't play games. Zap all three with a big Z. Phazime. For fast relief, don't stop at X. Go straight to the big Z. Phazime. We were out here trying to be the first women to trek across Antarctica when I hurt my shoulder. For explorer Anne Bancroft, finding pain relief became a priority. I talked to my doctor at base camp, and he prescribed Celebrex. Celebrex targets a major source of acute pain. Celebrex helps provide strong pain relief. Ask your doctor about Celebrex. Check with your doctor before resuming activities. People with aspirin-sensitive asthma or allergic reactions due to aspirin or other arthritis medicines or certain drugs called sulfonamides should not take Celebrex. In rare cases, serious stomach problems such as bleeding can occur without warning. Tell your doctor if you have kidney or liver problems. Who'd have thought something this small would turn out to be one of my most important pieces of equipment? If you're experiencing acute pain, ask your doctor about Celebrex or call 1-888-CELEBREX. Hi, I'm Bob. And I'm Charlie. This lawn is a work of art. I use Scott Premium Grass Seed. Do your inferior brands have weeds? But the seed that Scott has is the purest seed you can get. Healthy, lush, green. The lawn is only as good as the seed you start with.
Serenity Dry Active Liners from Tenna, designed to fit your style. This is Model T20. He has cancer. This is Curious 901. She has cancer, too. This is Malcolm W. His wife has cancer. This is the Cancer Survivors Network, a place where people can get together online to share information, get support, and get hope. This is the American Cancer Society. This is where to go for help. U.S. officials, both military and civilian, emphasize today that the fall of Baghdad does not mean the war in Iraq is over. Iraqi forces still hold parts of the oil-rich north, though there are new questions tonight about whether they will fight for the cities of Mosul and Kirkuk. Alan Pizzi reports from Erbil, northern Iraq. The streets of this Kurdish city erupted in celebration almost at the same time as did those in Baghdad, hurling unprintable curses on the name of Saddam Hussein, the people his regime had gassed, whose villages he had wrecked, whom he had driven into exile, swarmed out to celebrate what they are convinced was his downfall. But for all their enthusiasm, the oil cities of Mosul and Kirkuk have not yet fallen. Although Kurdish officials said today a key mountain overlooking Mosul had been taken and there was no opposition left in the city. The combination of Peshmerga guerrillas and U.S. special forces has provided the main thrust of the war on the northern front so far. The Kurds know the terrain intimately. The Americans move forward with them, spot the targets, then call in the airstrikes. It is a unique and at times uneasy coalition. The low-tech Kurdish fighters provide the blunt instrument. The high-tech and awesome firepower available to the special forces are the cutting edge. The Allies claim they work well together, but the potential for problems is always there. We're trying to keep them out of your hair. Break.